On Snow White and the Huntsman, our costumes were designed by three-time Oscar winner Colleen Atwood. Colleen is a true artist, and I was amazed by what she created for us. Colleen Atwood, costume designer for Snow White and the Huntsman. The first character that I encountered on the film was Kristen Stewart, who's playing Snow White. We didn't want her to be sort of a puffball little Snow White. We wanted her to be sort of a badass Snow White, like someone who was tough, who'd been through the, you know, who'd had a journey already at a very young age. We wanted to sort of have a fairy tale quality to it without it being all fairy-like. So we decided to make it out of a suede with stitch detail and a little bit of metal on it to reflect that she was maybe a little bit royal but, but not blinged out. The costume had to run for a long time through the story, so we wanted it to be able to change. I underdressed it with leather pants and, and boots that she could run in and do all the things that she had to do in the film because it, there's a lot of action in the film. As she goes through the woods, her dress undergoes different changes. It starts as a long dress and, and overdress and then gets ripped away, so you see the leather leggings underneath and a shorter top, and that's mainly what she wears for the movie. At the end of the movie, she becomes sort of a heroine to the people's army, and at that point, to prepare for a battle, we made her a hand-sculpted custom suit of armor that she wears for this sequence of the film. The next character that I encountered was Ravenna, the evil queen. Her crown was an important part of her character. It's iconic, but also it's totally a Romanesque kind of design. A lot of her costume elements were reflecting death. There's a collar made of stag beetle horns. There's actually a dress made of beetle wings in her wardrobe. There is a wedding dress for her, which is at the beginning of the movie, that has a huge collar made out of really fine, almost skeletal type bones. She also has a cape made of cock feather that have been carved and sculpted into a shape on a cape. I call it her transforming cape because she becomes birds when she wears it. So all in all, she's quite the haute couture sort of queen, but, but with a sort of an aged kind of rotting edge to her. The next character that I encountered was Chris Hemsworth, who is our lovely huntsman. Everything that he wears in the film, he carries on his back, his weaponry, everything. So we designed it all to work in that way. He has different variations of it, coat on, coat off, but it's basically that. And it's all made out of real materials that you could find in the woods, like different kinds of buffalo leather and all kinds of leather sewn together by hand all handmade, a rough woven, hand-woven linen shirt fabric. He was definitely sort of the organic character of the story. With the design of this film, I had two armies. I had a shadow army, and they were a very high concept, sort of off the beaten path sort of army, non-classic. It was really fun to get to do an army that sort of you hadn't done before, that nobody's seen before. We made over 350 costumes for them. And that process, along with the Silver Army, which you see on King Magnus and, and his people and also on Snow White, began in January, way before pre-production started on the film in other areas. To do this kind of work, you start with a, a lot of concept work and then a sculpt and a mold. So that process is almost a four-month process before you have a costume. So we had to begin these guys, even before we had a final script, we knew they were going to be in there. I think they're, they look pretty scary when you see all thousand of them coming at you in the movie. I've made over a thousand costumes for this film, including two armies. It's been an incredible undertaking and collaborating with these three main actors. This has been an amazing experience for me.